Good morning, everybody. Welcome and thank you for coming this morning. I'm Tom Meckler. I am the regional marketing manager for Bosch for our intrusion products. And that sounds like a fancy title, but I'm the product guy, basically. So if there is an intrusion product made by Bosch, sold in the US or Canada, I'm your man. And thank you very much for all your business. This morning, we're gonna talk about communication and alarm communication, Bosch alarm communication. It, it, I've been in this industry for a while, and it doesn't seem that long ago when communication was plugged into the phone line. Yep, it's, it's communicating. Well, boy, that's changed over the last three decades, for goodness sake. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways to communicate, and communication means a lot of different things, especially with Bosch. So this morning, we're gonna talk about some of those things. Here's our agenda, some of the things we're gonna talk about. Bosch and the 3G Sunset, our installer services portal, which is a tool that you can use to manage your Bosch panels and communication devices. We're actually gonna give you a sneak peek of a new software receiver that'll be available the fourth quarter of this year. We have a new release of our intrusion panels that connect with mass notification. Bosch Security Manager, which is our smartphone app, and we can't talk about communication without talking about IP camera integration. The 3G Sunset. I know that sparks fear in a lot of you. You know, it used to be when you think of a sunset, you think of a scene like this. A sunset. Isn't it beautiful? I took this picture on my iPhone. That's a lake south of, of Munich, just at the northern tip of the Alps. It's called the Amher Sea. And what you don't see is behind this, the, somebody taking the picture, which was me, is a little kiosk where you could get coffee and tea, or maybe a margarita, maybe. It's sunset. So that's what we used to think about sunset. But if you're in the alarm business, if you're an installer, or you have an alarm system in your building, or you're an alarm manufacturer, you might be thinking about something like this. <laughs> I thought that was in Sunset, but it's a train. It's the light at the end of the tunnel. It's a train, and it's on its way towards me. Right? <laughs> oh, God, what do you mean? How could the end of 22 be coming so quickly, right? <laughs> the Verizon, I, I cut that statement off the Verizon's website. So at the end of 2022, those 3G modules, some of them have already stopped working. You know, AT&T has dropped their network, but they can roam over here. It's all kind of complicated. But don't worry. Bosch has you covered. We have solutions for this. If you're using a Bosch panel, clicky thing, your solution is easy as one, two, three. One, order your new Bosch cell module. All Bosch cell modules are now 4G LTE or uh, for either the Verizon or the AT&T networks. We're actually offering a $50 discount on any replacements. So if you have a system out there that needs a new cell module, you replace that and we're gonna give you 50 bucks off on your new cell module. Update the firmware in whatever that thing's gonna plug into. Remember, if some of you were here when we launched our latest panel line, I remember saying, hey, we made these plug-in cell modules because we can't control the way the networks are gonna change. We wanna make it easy for you. So all you gotta do is unplug the old one, plug the new one in, update the firmware, and you're good. Well, guess what? We're there, man. <laughs> now you gotta do that. Remember, hey, Markler did say that about 10 years ago. Well, here we are. <laughs> update the firmware in your panel, your host module. Plug that in, the firmware's free, it's available on our website, you download it, you plug in the module, and you're good to go. So it's really, it's really a simple update with Bosch panel. I can't imagine why anybody would be using anything other than a Bosch panel, but just in case, we have a dialer capture module. We actually invented dialer capture technology. The, the patent ran out several years ago, so there's other manufacturers out there that make dialer capture modules. But a dialer capture, capture module allows you to connect to a panel that's on a standard phone line and take the phone line out and convert it to IP 
or cellular communication. And that's what our B465 universal dual path communicator does. It replaces the existing phone line. It's you all listed for fire. It can be primary path, sole path, and it gives end-to-end -end communication. Some dialer capture modules, when they get that signal from the panel, if they understand it, they say, good, we're good, man. And the panel thinks it's good. The way ours works is we get the signal from the panel, we send it to the central station. When the central station says, we're good, man, then we give the acknowledge to the panel. So it's end-to-end -end communication. So it's much more secure than some of those other guys that are out there. So 3G sunset, don't worry about it. It might look like the train at the end of the tunnel, but really, we've got solutions for you. I want to talk a little bit about alarm communication services, and we have a couple representatives from our installer services team here today. Anybody deal with our installer services team? Anybody have Bosch Cellular on any panels out there? Yeah, we got a couple. Are these guys great or what? Man, I'll tell you what, I, I, this is stuff that is beyond my ability to understand, but they know it very well and they're just a great team. They do a really good job, so kudos to our communications team. A couple of highlights, cellular services and cloud services. These are the services that now we're communicating because we don't just plug this thing into a, into a phone line anymore. We have cellular, as we talked about with the 3G sunset, our cellular communications are, are listed for the highest level of burglar alarm communication, of course, for fire. It's a revenue opportunity for all of you. And as an end user, it's a cost-saving opportunity because uh, commercial phone lines are pretty expensive. But even when the cell service is sold to that end user through several channels, us to you, to them, they're going to save some money on that. So that's great. And also, since it's an intelligent connection, it's really IP, it gives us additional features and capabilities. So Bosch has several different options for uh, Verizon, for AT&T. Really, why would you select one over the other? Most of our customers use Verizon. Some of them use AT&T. Which one works the best and wherever you're mounting this thing is really how you're going to make that decision. But we have a range of products that meet your needs. And anybody here from Canada, we have a module that works there as well. <laughs> Bosch Cloud Connect Services. Connection, communication. In the year 2000, which doesn't seem as long ago as it actually was, Bosch won the New Product Showcase Award for the first IP receiver. You're going to connect an alarm panel to the internet and send it over network? Seemed crazy, right? Well, we did. And over the years, we found out about that technology. One of the things we found out is that IT managers don't like stuff connected to their network and don't want anything coming into their network, right? So we created Remote Connect, which is a cloud service tool that allows our systems to connect to our cloud for connectivity. So if you have a cloud service account, a Remote Connect account with us, and you want to connect to one of our intrusion panels, whether it be for remote programming or to use one of our apps, you can use that connection. All of our intrusion panels have a cloud certificate built in. It is a safe, secure connection out of that building and into our cloud. And, and it's the type of connection that the IT guys say, yeah, OK, you could go with it. So there's a lot of benefits for that. It's a great tool. The installer services portal, we have a new portal. We, installer services is how you manage all your systems, all these things that are connecting. Well, some you gotta manage, you gotta keep control of them. Am I paying for this one, am I not paying for that one? What's the IP address for that one? And we have a portal that allows you to manage all that stuff. Uh, the portal allows you to create new accounts, create your account organize your installed base. There's actually ways to make sure that only certain employees, certain technicians, if you have some high security locations and that technician is not supposed to touch it, you can set those types of things up. You can activate, deactivate cloud services or cell services. You really can manage your business. You, you know if, if this person or this customer's uh, account is online or you're taking those off, all that kind of stuff. And right through that, installer services portal, you can actually request service through a service ticket. It's a great tool. These guys are doing a great job. I can't say enough about them. 
Well, I talk a lot, so I probably could say enough. You know, you, they know me pretty good. Another really cool tool, you're all sitting down, right? You are. We actually have an app that goes with our installer services portal. You ever try to type in the MEID address of a cell phone module from the installer that's saying, yeah, it's four, six, nine, three, eight. Who wants to do that, right? You can tie an app to your installer services account. All of our devices that can connect to that account have a QR code on them. Open up your app, scan the QR code, if, as long as you're logged into your account, boom, that product's in your, in your account. It's a really, really cool, convenient tool. Okay, sneak preview. What I'm about to tell you, you can't tell anybody. Not really, you can tell them. But we're about to release a new uh, central station receiver, a software central station receiver. It'll be available in the third quarter or so of this year, but we're actually showing it on the booth, so if anybody say, hey, has Bosch got that, so that software receiver coming? You can come over and see it. It's operating, it's receiving messages, and we can, we can show that to you. Uh, but it's a new software-based receiver. It's got some different parts to it, some really cool things. Anybody use Bosch receivers in their central stations? You're gonna love this. You really are. Uh, it's a browser-based user interface. You don't have to load software on every machine anymore. You'll be able to browse into it, of course, with a secure connection to make changes. You can have multiple receivers. It's really software, so you can just decide how you want to split things up, which accounts go to which one. It'll support up to 10,000 accounts per receiver. It's, uh, it have a monitoring dashboard that'll tell you which accounts are online, which accounts are offline, what's going on, what communication is happening. It's really a great tool, and if you're a central station customer and want to see where we're going with central station receivers, pop over to the booth and we'll be able to show that to you. And if you come to the booth, you'll see some screens like this. So this is the account setup screen. Uh, this is from a browser, so it, it hosts a browser. You use Internet Explorer, or, how old am I? <laughs> you use Chrome or another browser tool. And it, it, it allows you to add your accounts. Very, very simple, very easy. This is what that dashboard looks like, the number of devices that are online, or maybe if something's offline, and if it is offline, which one's offline, the events that are occurring, Am I connected to automation? It's really, uh, like I said, we introduced the first IP central station rece receiver to the market 20 years ago, and it kind of feels like it's 20 years old, but this one feels like we made it in 2022, and I think you're gonna be really happy with it. Communication. We have a whole division called communication. It isn't exactly alarm communication. Well, it's starting to be alarm communication. But we have these speakers that you hear. Does that sound good? Those are Electra Voice speakers. We make those. So there's speakers like that in Dallas Cowboys Stadium. There's speakers like that in, well, not like this, they're the size of tractor trailer trucks. <laughs> there's speakers like this in Miami Dolphins Stadium and concerts and such. So we make communication. Uh, a wide range of communication products. And one of those things we make is public address communication. So in a mall, in a, in a shopping center, in a business, you might want to have a public address system. Maybe you're playing background music most of the time, but there's a great sale at In-N-Out Burger. I love In-N-Out Burger. I did get it. For those of you that are wondering, I got it on Monday. I'm from the East Coast. This is a treat for me. So there's a big salad in and out burger on the double-double animal style, so you want to announce that over the mall PA system, uh, all that kind of stuff. But what it's really there for is to keep those occupants informed if something goes awry, if something goes bad, you can have messages that tell them what to do. We now have UL2572, which is the UL listing for mass notification public address, okay? What does that mean? That means that if you are installing a public address system in a facility like a mall, you can now install a UL listed system with, in, with intrusion connected to that. Why would you want to do such a thing, you ask? Well, you get a lot of benefits from that connection. 
If you imagine I'm a public address system and I have a dry contact input and you want to activate the severe weather alert, I can go pull that pull station and activate the severe weather alert. But there's no supervision of that connection. Are the wires there? Are they not? There's no end of line resistor. You're just hoping that it, that it works, right? Well, an intrusion system is designed to monitor things like that. So a G-series panel can support up to 509 in, 599 inputs that are supervised. And we know that that pull station is there because we can see the end of line resistor. So it's designed to do that. So you have supervised, reliable actuation devices because now you have an intrusion system whose job it is to provide that information to the PA system. Programmable outputs. We have programmable outputs that can be activated uh, you know, if there's a fire alarm, if there's a burglar alarm, if there's a mass shooter, if there's a weather event, these outputs can trigger different inputs on the, uh, on the PA system. Central station reporting, we can report events for a mass notification situation. And local visual enunciation, we have a brand new keypad which is designed for mass notification. You'll see there's no fire stuff on here, there's no intrusion stuff on here, that's the mass notification system. All these things are required if you're installing a UL listed system for mass notification, okay? So did he say we're connecting relays and inputs and outputs? Can I just do that and with any system? Well, yes and no. There's a lot of intelligence behind and underneath all of this. And I'll give you an example. So we have combination intrusion, fire, access, and now mass notification intrusion systems, right? The G-series. If an intrusion occurs, we're going to do what we need to do. Send a report, turn on the sirens, or whatever. If while that intrusion event is active, a fire alarm occurs, the fire alarm has to take precedence because now we have to evacuate the building. So fire alarm is more important than burglar alarm. Mass shooter, severe weather, is more important than fire alarm. So if it's really hitting the fan and there's a lot of stuff going on right now, somebody's got to decide which things are more, most important and how it's going to handle all this stuff. And that's what the G-Series does now that it has UL2572. So I hope that gives you an idea for why did they do that? Well, that's why we did that. Okay. Bosch Security Manager. We have an app. We've had an app for a while, but we have a new app called Bosch Security Manager. It's our mobile app, works on iPhone, works on Android, and it has a lot of features. We, we did a lot of research on this, talked to a lot of customers. What do you want in a new app? Well, the ability to manage my users, the ability to really manage my entire system from my app. Of course you want to arm and disarm and, and those kinds of things. We've been able to do that for a while. But I want to do these other things too. So we'll talk about some of those other things. It's easy to install. It's easy to operate. Remember the remote connect I talked about, our cloud connect service? Once you have that up and running, you just click on a little button on, uh, in RPS, which is our remote programming software, put in the end user's email address, and bam, they're tied in. It's not sending them an email, it's just allowing them to use their system in, or allowing them to use the Bosch Security Manager app on that system or that system or that system. We don't think there's a theoretical limit to the number of systems it will support. So I love bringing up In-N-Out Burger. Let's say I'm the regional manager for In-N-Out Burger for Clark, Clark County. I've got, I don't know how many hundred of them, there can't be enough as far as I'm concerned. And somebody has forgotten to arm the one on the other side of town. Well, I can pull out my iPhone and I can arm the In-N-Out Burger on the other side of town so people can get their double-double animal styles tomorrow. You've probably figured out what my favorite burger is by now, I'm guessing. I don't get them. I live in Rochester, New York. So complete security control from your smartphone. You can arm and disarm. System management from anywhere. Anywhere you can connect to the cell network. Anywhere you can connect to the the internet, it's convenient, it's really a complete system. What have we added? Push notifications that the end user can filter. I want to get alarms, I want to get access control events, I want to know when they arm and disarm my system. I can select that and I can select when I want to do that. Built-in security. 
If it is a Bosch product and it has an Ethernet jack on it, it is a very secure device because Bosch is very serious about data protection, data security, and this supports TLS 1.2 network security. Other things you can do, of course, you can arm and disarm different panels, as many as you want. You can uh, full the, view the full history of that panel, what's been going on here, that shows up in your dashboard, and then you can also go get more history out of the system. It works with all of our B-series and G-series panels. You can control custom functions, you can lock and unlock doors. You really have complete control of your security system. It's really a great tool. Here's a few screenshots from, from my personal iPhone and, and some of the tests here. So you can see that's how I'm gonna select which push notifications I'd like to receive. Those what the, are what the push notifications look like. I can bypass a point. Not everybody can bypass a point from their app. But we can bypass a point from our app. I can arm and disarm different areas. I can arm, stay in a way, perimeter, um, interior, all that kind of fun stuff. And of course, I can add and delete user passcodes. So how do you get Bosch Security Manager working, you might ask? Well, first, you need to be, install or you need to be enrolled in our installer services portal. If you're using cellular communications with Bosch or you're already using our Bosch Remote Connect feature, you are in our installer services portal. And again, contact the installer services team. They're just great. They really are. Set up your account, load the panel in, and you can load it in a number of different ways. One of them is with that app I showed you. And then you ask customers to just download. The, the app is free. If you want to download it, please don't do it while I'm talking. But if you want to download it, you can upload it. You can download it right now and check out a demo version of it. But please wait until I'm done. That would be great. So that's, it's as easy as that. So you're ready to go. A discussion about Bosch communication would not be complete without talking about our IP camera integration. You, I hope, are aware that in addition to Bosch Intrusion products, which is basically my life, we make IP cameras, and we make a wide range of IP cameras, and they're really designed for the commercial, industrial market, really, really good, robust products, very secure, very capable products. Our IP cameras can connect to our intrusion panels over a network, and they can talk to one another. And the capabilities that that provides are like nothing it's the greatest secret in the industry, unfortunately, but it's like nothing you can get from anybody else. It, the things we can do with that, I'm going to talk about in a second, uh, are, are just amazing. The problems you can solve for your customers. Well, first you should understand a little bit about uh, the cameras and the things they can do. Bosch cameras have built-in video analytics, and these are the types of things they can detect. There's an object inside a field which the field might be the area in front of that door or the area by the fence. Uh, someone's loitering. Um, this looks like that. There's an idle object. There's a removed object. There's a crowd. All those kinds of things are things that the, or events that the cameras can detect. And there's filters. They can classify the object. It's a person. It's a car. It's a motorcycle. It's a bike. They're very, very smart. We've taught these cameras what a person looks like. They don't have to kind of, yeah, those pixels look kind of right. No, we've taught these cameras and they know that that is a person. So that's very, very accurate. It can classify on color, speed, direction, all these kinds of things, right? So, so really what we've done is we've taken a camera, which used to be just video. You know, hey, I'll give you video. I'll let you know what's going on. You can come back and look at it later. And we've turned it into a very intelligent sensor, very intelligent sensor, probably a better sensor than you or I, because we can't see in the dark. Now we connect it to the intrusion panel. And how does all that work? Well, so the camera has an event. And it wants to send that event to the intrusion panel. Uh, just like a door contact or a motion detector or a smoke detector, it's actually activating a point on the alarm panel. And as soon as you activate a point on the alarm panel, well, the world's your oyster, right? You can send a report to the monitoring station. You can make an announcement. You can send somebody a text or a push notification. You can just make some noise at the keypad if you want. But you can do a lot with that because that's what an alarm panel does. 
Something has detected something, I'm going to report it for you. That's what the alarm panel does. So we take that really, really intelligent camera as a sensor and we put it into this panel's job, which, whose job is to report things in creative ways, and that's the output we get. So what can you do with this kind of stuff? Someone has blocked your fire door with a pallet of boxes. Anybody ever run into that with one of their customers? This is actually the, the first one I can remember of this integration where we had a customer, a very large retailer, that was getting written up on a regular basis by the fire marshal. They'd come in and they'd do an inspection and someone has put a pallet of boxes in front of the fire exit. It is no longer a fire exit because you can't get past the pallet of boxes, right? And the fire marshal says, you do that again and I'm gonna find you. And they do it again and he finds them. You do that again, I'm gonna close your store. They don't want to close their store. So they would like a sensor that can detect that. Remember we talked about object in field? Well, a pallet of boxes is an object and the space in front of the door is a field and we can detect that object in field, it's been there a while, and trigger an output. Make noise on the keypad, send the store manager a text, those kinds of things. I've been in the motion detector business all of my adult life. Even going further back, if you ever want to hear the story, I'll tell you about my, my grammar school and, and the ultrasonic detector. God, that was 50 years ago. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm a motion detector guy and Bosch makes the best motion detectors in the industry, uh, just bar none. But there are things a motion detector can't do that a camera can do outdoor motion detector, because the camera is so intelligent, it is really a very good outdoor motion detector. Uh, vehicle detection, a motion detector can't tell the difference between a car and a person. So the camera is very intelligent, it can do all those kinds of things. One of my favorites is uh, the fence detection. So I have, I'm a camera and I'm looking down the fence line, right? Why do you have a fence? Keep the bad guys out, right? I have a fence to keep these people, not these people, you, you guys, you are fine people, I'm sure, these people from going over here. That's why I have a fence. So if these people come up and they approach the fence because they're figuring out whether they can climb it or not, I'd like to scare them away before they climb it. So the camera can detect that someone has approached the fence and activate an input on the alarm panel. And the panel can say, well, They've approached the fence. I don't need to do too much, but I'd like to scare them away. So let's turn on the floodlights and let's play a message. You are approaching a secure area. Please leave immediately. And maybe they'll leave. Well, let's say they don't leave. They jump over the fence. Same camera is looking at that area down that fence, but this area is they've breached. So we got approach, we got breach. Now they've breached, right? we activate a different input on the alarm panel that is an alarm. Release the hounds, call the police, whatever you need to do, this is bad. This ain't, this ain't so good, this is really bad. Same cameras doing the same thing, connected to the, the intrusion panel with two different inputs over the network, this isn't relay magic. We can do that 59 times. We can support 59 cameras in our intrusion panels. Each camera can activate eight different events. So imagine the flexibility and the capability that brings you. And, and, and you know, the only place you can get that is it's gotta have a Bosch logo on it because it's really, really intelligent stuff. Now, there's more, don't, don't worry. That's all communication from the camera to the panel. The panel can actually send communication back to the camera. So the, ca the panel can control what the camera is doing. Easiest example of that is when you leave your facility, what's the last thing you do? You arm your alarm system, right? When the alarm system is armed, that means nobody's supposed to be here. When I arm the alarm system, my building is closed, ain't nobody supposed to be in my building. So if I'm a camera and I'm pretty smart and you tell me there's no, nobody's supposed to be here, I might act differently than I would act when it's okay if people are here. So let's say I'm a camera and I'm looking out at the car lot of a car dealership. And I'm pretty smart, so I can detect that there's cars there, right? So I know that there's, there's I can, I can even tell you how many cars there are if you want me to. 
And during the day, people might be test driving those cars. So it's perfectly fine if those cars are moving around. So I kind of ignore that. I know that they moved, but I don't really care that much. But at night, nobody's supposed to be test driving the cars because there's nobody here. I'm closed. If they're test driving the car, they're probably stealing it. So if I detect that a car has moved at night, I'm going to activate an alarm. How do I know if it's day or night? The alarm system armed input triggers which profile I'm going to use. So if the alarm system is off, I'm on the, yeah, somebody driving too fast or maybe somebody fell over profile. If the alarm system is on, I'm on the, they've just stolen a car profile. So those are different things, different events, and it talks about the two-way communication between these two systems. It's really a, a great capability, and you should think about that. If you're selling video systems, you're no longer just selling surveillance. You're also selling very intelligent detection devices, and you can report them with our intrusion panels. So that is a little bit about Bosch communication and the different features and benefits that we can provide you with the different ways that our intrusion control panels can communicate. And again, it's no longer you plug it into the phone line, if it dials up, you got dial tone, you're good to go. Now it's connection over network, it's connection over cellular, it's connection through the cloud, it's connection to other devices, and all these things provide additional benefits for you and your customers. Anybody have any questions? This gentleman, my lovely assistant, Mark Land, is gonna bring a microphone because we wanna be able to hear you, sir. How does this work with the UMM software? The UMM software, thank you for asking. UMM is a user management module, and that is a tool that's designed to allow you to manage your users across all of your panels, okay? And if you think, if you're familiar with RPS, RPS is our remote programming software. And RPS is used on a panel by panel basis. So I use RPS and I program that panel and I program that panel. UMM, which is a user management module, is a user by user basis. So if I'm a user, I might have a passcode in seven or eight different panels, and that's what UMM does. UMM actually manages the database of RPS, but RPS still does the communication to the panels. And we have some automated service tools. We have what's called unintended, unattended. I always make the mistake and say unintended. It is absolutely intended, but is not attended, unattended remote programming uh, software. So what happens is there's a scheduler that runs, and RPS says, hey, they've added this person, they've taken out that person, I'm supposed to go and change the records in all these panels. So it does that automatically. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes, I just didn't know if programming through that automatically kind of synced up with everything as well. So, because I know like for the mapping, if I do go through UMM, it maps all the people. So if I go through the UMM to change codes or whatever, it'll uh, bounce down. If I did it through the uh, BSM app, oh. will that still put it in there? So it's now mapped with all of the other. Yeah, so that's, there. there's no, there, there's no, you have to be very careful about how you manage that. So if you are using UMM to manage your passcodes, you should not use a, a Bosch Security Manager because that automated uh, remote programming feature that I talked about, that's going to assume that RPS is always right and it's going to download it. So if someone changes their passcode in the app, it's not going to detect that. So that's something you should stay away from. So you, if you're using BSM to manage your users, that's great. If you're using UMM to manage your users, that's great. But don't combine the two because they, they, they won't synchronize well. In the panel, you can see the video in the app, in the app for the, the intrusion app. Can you yeah, the see the cameras is, can live? Can you see the video in the intrusion app? And the answer is yes. So you can see live video from any of the cameras in the intrusion app. If you want to see recorded video, we have a different video app for that, or you want to control the camera. But the, on the Bosch Security Manager app, you can see video from any of those uh, cameras that are attached to the panel. 
On one of the slides, uh, it said, send a snapshot photo. Yes. Can you describe exactly how that works? So if I have yes. an arm panel so the, and I have a separate VMS into... Ah, okay. That's a good question, and thank you, because I always forget to tell people that you don't need to use Bosch VMS for this cap for this capability, you can, or you can use somebody else's VMS. It's a, it's a different thing altogether. And you could actually just use an SD card program, you know, plugged into the back. This does not affect the communication with whatever VMS you're using with the Bosch camera. It's underneath all of that. So how do you send a snapshot? Well, if I'm a camera, one of, a, a Bo one of the things a Bosch camera can do is send an email snapshot of what it sees right now. So what happens is the alarm panel can trigger an input on the camera that is programmed to send a snapshot of what it sees right now. So somebody presses the panic button, that activates the input on the camera. The camera input, the alarm input on the camera, is programmed to say, hey, if I get an input on this, cam on this, on this or if I get an activation on this input, I'm supposed to send an email of what I see right now. That's how you get the email snapshot. So that SMS text or whatever clip goes back to the alarm panel and then out to it, the network? It does not. No video goes through the alarm panel. That is a direct connection from the camera itself. And in that case, it is a snapshot only. You mentioned a clip. The clip would be from using one of our, um, our video apps. And the guy who just handed you the microphone is an expert on making all that stuff work. So he is, uh, he's, yeah, he, he would be who I would ask to make it work for me. <laughs> use the SIM card. Yes, you can use the SIM card, right. Yeah, so the SIM, you can actually record to a SIM card in the camera. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning. It's good to be in a room with you all. I hope you have an excellent rest of your ISC show. Thank you. Bosch. Invented for life.